running free our terse kernel on the Pico 2 and RP2350 isn't quite as simple as I first thought. One needs to configure the more advanced features of the RP2350 um, to port over an application onto it. Let me show you how. Hi, I'm John, your concierge to the world of the Raspberry Pi Pico, Pico 2, robotics, IoT and other fun tech. Remember to subscribe and join the community. In this video, I'm looking at getting set up to run free RTOS kernel projects on the Pico 2 and RP2350 boards. I'm used free RTOS kernel a lot and it allows me to run multiple tasks, which I find really useful when dealing with internet protocols and robotics. Though in this video, I'm just going to blink an LED. If you want to learn more about free RTOS kernel, then I have a course on this over on the Udemy platform. It focuses on the Pico and RP2040, but everything I teach there is actually transferable to the RP2350 and Pico 2, so go check it out. If you'd like this video and it helps your learning or projects, why not drop me a cash tip using the super thanks button below the video. I'm saving these out up to get myself to the open source conference in San Francisco next year, and I'd appreciate your help in getting me there, and I hope to see you there too. Please hit the like button on the video and subscribe for more. So free RTOS for the Pico 2 and RP2350 means uh, a few changes from what we've done on free RTOS kernel in the past. Of course, this means um, SDK 200 and that's what's driving some of these changes. Previously, I've always used the free RTOS's version and repo for bringing down the code for the free RTOS kernel, and that includes support for RP2040. But actually for RP2350, we now need to move over and use the fault version of the free RTOS kernel that's on the Raspberry Pi um, GitHub account. And that's then got the support for the RP2350 and therefore Pico2 within it. In fact, that has consistent support largely between the RP2040 and RP2350. I say largely because there are some differences or some additional things that you need to define for the RP2350 and we'll come to those in due course. So you can find this new um, free RTOS kernel repo over on GitHub at this address. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is one of the most experienced PCB manufacturers in the world. They pride themselves to be your best business partner, as well as a good friend in every aspect of your PCB needs. As well as being a PCB fabricator and PCB manufacturer, they also do 3D printing, CNC and sheet metal work. Have you seen their new design competition? Including a wide range of themes and real cash prizes. Go check it out today. Now, I've previously always kept my FreeRTOS kernel as a uh, library within the project, and I put it in there as a sub-module within, um, uh, within the library section. Uh, for this new FreeRTOS kernel version from Raspberry Pi, I decided to actually have a shared copy. I'm not sure whether this is the greatest idea or greatest strategy, but it's a strategy I'm going with at the moment. Um, one of the things that makes me nervous about this is that that free RTOS kernel project doesn't actually have any tags or any version labels within it at this point. So there's nothing even to track it back to a particular version of the Pico SDK, um, or indeed which um, free RTOS kernel version it is based on. That worries me a little from this strategy, but anyway, this is what I'm doing. I'm placing it right now under my Pico, um, under my home directory, where all of my other Pico tools are. So that's where my Pico SDK is, and indeed that's where I've got a shared copy of Pico tool, because I'm not compiling Pico tool each time I uh, do a build. Um, if you want to know a bit more about that, go take a look at my SDK200 video that will talk uh, about what I'm doing there and why. So I've got environment variables, of course, pointing to these. So Pico SDK is pointing off to my Pico SDK version 200. The Pico tool fetch from Git path, 
which uh, snazzy name I know uh, it is points off to the Pico tool that one's that name of that is set by of, the, of those two are set by Raspberry Pi and then uh, Pico Friatos um, that's one I've added that is entirely my fault and my name and that's going to point to the Friatos kernel folder so within our projects then we're going to kind of refer to these from things like that cmake list uh, .txt file at the very top of my project. I'm also still going to have a freeOTOS kernel import um, CMake file that I'll keep locally. And of course I will need a port uh, location to actually port my freeOTOS kernel uh, code and I'll still need to add some configuration and, uh, and stuff that I want for my environment and my setup. So a free RTOS application project uh, for the RP2350 and Pico2 look pretty much the same as a free RTOS application for you know an RP2040 and, and Pico. The only difference here is a little bit of the configuration within the port uh, folder. So down in port in free RTOS kernel and the free RTOS config.h file. And there are additional set of configurations that have been added in for um, the RP2350. Well, they've been added in actually for this um, ARM Cortex M33, you know, which is basically part of the ARM V8. And they were actually added in and talked about by FreeRTOS. They've just then been picked up and configured to be used for the RP2350. So uh, this is the standard set of configurations that are needed um, here. These will basically give you the same sort of uh, capability as we're used to using FreeRTOS on the RP2040. Uh, that means that the more advanced security features, particularly on the RP2350, are sort of disabled. Things like um, the config enable MPU. Well, MPU is the memory protection unit. So this would uh, allow us to actually have control over which of our FreeRTOS tasks can answer, uh, access which bits of memory. Um, but actually we've turned that off. Uh, so we have access from all our tasks to all memory. Do we want to have trust zones? Um, so trust zones and uh, secure, uh, uh, the next one actually, which is around uh, tasks being able to uh, call secure functions. These two actually are um, uh, sort of um, alternatives. Um, so what what we would use on the RP2040 is that everything can access everything and we can call all the secure functions, all of the standard bits and just call any function anywhere we like in, in uh, the code base. Um, so that's what we've what I've configured here and that means that the configure run free RTOS secure only is uh, turned um, on which means we can yeah basically run free RTOS, uh, free RTOS or other secure functions anywhere we like. The alternative to that is turning on trust zones and uh, and configuring all of that up. Uh, then we've got the FPU, which is the floating point unit. So that's floating point mass, and we've turned that on. We need to set up how the interrupt priorities for when interrupt vectors call, uh, what priority are they getting as a task, and we've given them 16 here. And finally, we seem to need to set up the clock speed, though intriguingly, this doesn't seem to be needed to be done in the our Raspberry Pi's own examples and demos. And indeed, I couldn't understand why the CPU clock speed wasn't automatically being set up by the RP2350's port. So that was a little bit surprising. Oh yeah, of course we can configure it and, and overclock it. But even so, I was a little surprised to need to put that in and then not to be a default for it. If you want to read up more of these and understand more than I do about these stuff, there is a great article on the uh, blog section on FreeRTOS, his website as well, of using FreeRTOS on the ARM V8 um, M 
microcontrollers. So go check that out. So I've produced a demo, of course, to show this in action and show me build this and get this running on a, a Pico 2. Um, it's just my normal application to blink some LEDs. Um, so nice, nice and simple. Uh, you can find it on this repo on GitHub and it's in the ex examples uh, free RTOS blink folder. So on the repo, let's have a look at the examples and we're going to look at this free RTOS blink example. So um, first of all, let's just have a look in port because this is where I've got that port and free RTOS kernel folder and we've got uh, key here is the free RTOS uh, config.h file and right down the bottom of that we have these additions that we need for the RP2350 and they're just the ones that I've talked you through. Apart from that actually things are the same as they are for any free RTOS application I guess. Um, well nearly. I guess in the in the top level CMake file we're going to um, define of course our Pico board to be a Pico 2 and our platform to be the RP2350. We're of course include the standard uh, SDK and uh, then I'm going to set up some variables of where my free RTOS uh, code is. Um, notice I'm using that environmental variable for Pico free RTOS so I'm using my shared copy taken from Raspberry Pi and um, I've got my location of my port folder as well. Uh, so include um, the free RTOS configuration files for, to load those in and that's all the things in, in CMake really. So this example is very simple. Um, what I'm actually using is a blink agent. So the launch here goes through the uh, standard main which runs free launch the launch is going to create a task which we're going to call the main task which is basically our boot task and then it's going to launch the scheduler and our main task is basically just this uh, little tiny function here and I'm going to create a new agent which is a task running as a class um, called blink which is going to blink an LED on uh, this um, a definition which is GPIO2 for me. Um, so I'll set that up and I, I will start that uh, task running and then I'm just going to sit here printing out stats around what's actually running on the um, free RTOS. And that's it, it's very simple, um, let's see that running. So let's just see that Pico 2 flashing that LED using free RTOS. Free RTOS kernel on the RP2350 and Pico 2 feels just like our normal free RTOS kernel environment. To set up, we have to be aware of some of the more advanced features of the RP2350 though, and configure these. Hence, the application here is a useful template to work from. If you like this video and it helps your learning on projects, why not drop me a cash tip using the super thanks button below the video. Remember, I'm saving these up to get myself to open source in San Francisco next year, and I'd appreciate your help in getting me there, and of course I hope to see you there too. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then please do hit the like button and please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next video. Goodbye for now.